This week's blog post is the second in my series on Museum of the American Arts and Crafts Movement in St. Petersburg, Florida. For more on the museum, see part one of this series. This is the second and final post. We're looking at lamps and then at windows and ceramics. So on the left here is a group of hanging lighting fixtures from circa 1905 to 1910. They're attributed to Dard Hunter and were manufactured at the Roycroft shops in East Aurora, New York. On the right is a hanging lantern that's attributed to Victor Toothmaker, circa 1910, and was manufactured at the Craftsman Workshops in Eastwood, New York. The Glasgow Rose motif was inspired by Charles Rennie Mackintosh and the Glasgow School. I would happily have any of these lamps in my house. This is decorative art by one of the great names of American architecture, Louis Sullivan. The sconce dating to 1907 or so was designed for the Henry B. Bamson House in Riverside, Illinois, which was demolished in 1960. Sullivan designed one of the buildings for the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago. We know that Babson attended that exposition because it inspired in him a yearning to own purebred Arabian horses, which by the 1930s he did. Babson Egyptian horses are still a recognized bloodline in the thoroughbred world. The striking point for me about the Babson House sconce is its quality. It's one of many that were cast by Winslow Brothers Ornamental Iron Company for the home of a wealthy but not fabulously wealthy American. But the workmanship is better than that on the chalice on the right, which is the best that artisans of mid-12th century France, or for that matter, Europe in the Middle Ages, would produce. These are assorted table lamps. On the left is a windmill-themed lamp attributed to Forrest Emerson Mann, circa 1910. Quaint Dutch motifs like this were considered suitable for homes in the arts and crafts. On the right are two table lamps designed by Dirk van Erp, circa 1915 to 33 and 1911 to 1915. They were manufactured in San Francisco, California, and the shades are of mica. Now we move on to windows. The Museum of the American Arts and Crafts Movement has a large collection of leaded glass windows. This one is George Washington Maher's The Windows from the Winton House in Wisconsin, which date to around 1905. Rather than colors, Maher used different textures of clear and white glass. These are by Frank Lloyd Wright. On the left is a window from the Avery Cornley House in Riverside, Illinois, circa 1906 to 1908. As with a desk from the Coonley House that we saw last week, the horizontal lines complement the Coonley House's very style design. On the right is another Frank Lloyd Wright window. This one is from the Darwin D. Martin House in Buffalo, New York, circa 1903 to 1905. The chevrons and squares in iridescent glass are stylized versions of the wisteria that grew on the Martin property. Moving on to ceramics, these are some typical ceramic vases from the arts and crafts movement. The ones on the left were actually lamp bases. These ceramic panels, each of which is almost six feet high, were designed to amuse and educate the young patients at St. Thomas's Hospital in London, demolished in 1968. The panels were executed in London at the Royal Dalton Factory, which is better known today for its dinner services and figurines. Fireplaces, the center of many homes, were favorite areas for decoration during the arts and crafts movement. The mantle facing, which goes around the firebox, and the overmantle, which goes above the shelf or mantle, were commissioned from the Rookwood Pottery in Cincinnati, Ohio. These two elegant peacock panels for an overmantle were manufactured in University City, Missouri. They're done in a technique called sgraffito, which is Italian for scratched. It involves applying a layer of color, and then before the piece is fired, scratching in a design that exposes the clay underneath. Peacocks were a favorite subject of arts and crafts designers and artists. 
The Rookwood Pottery of Cincinnati developed a unique translucent glaze called vellum. Tiles sprayed with it were sold framed to reinforce their status as artworks rather than merely functional pieces that you would sit a hot pot on, for instance. The Rookwood Pottery was still in operation until 1967. And finally, another peacock, this one on a panel created for the exterior of a home in Beverly Hills, California. The Museum of the American Arts and Crafts Movement has many more works that are worth a look. I'd say allow three hours or so for a visit. You can also visit nearby in St. Petersburg, the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art and the Imagine Museum, which includes modern glass. If you like this sort of whirlwind tour of museums, you can look on my website at the Museums tag. The URL is at the bottom of this page. Diane Durante Writer has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on dianedurantywriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.